Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Only Murders in a Building, Season 2, Episode 4. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I was hoping we'd get an episode like this where we get properly introduced to Lucy. She has been kind of this, this background situation. It's been a part of Charles' story, and we know that he did get in contact with her. And this episode kind of gives us a montage of him kind of interactions with her, like showing off stuff, and it's like him kind of almost in ebb and flow and things. But obviously, she's basically kind of a Zoomer, and so she's saying like, oh, bet, and he's like, bet? How much? And he deleted because he was like, no, that sounds stupid. He's like, that's short, that's my old man showing him. Like, obviously, bet just mean like, yeah, sure thing. Or like, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Like, okay, com it's basically the new confirmation. I thought that was kind of interesting. Also, I had to look it up because I the entire episode was like, why does she seem so familiar? I'm like, she can't be who I think she is, and she totally is. Uh, the actress's name is Zoe Coletti. I looked it up to make sure, but uh, yeah, that's the actress who plays Dakota in Fear the Walking Dead. I was like, I was like, it kind of looked like her, but she looked a little different. So I, was, I wasn't 100% sure, but it, yeah, totally is her. I was like, that's super cool. I was like, oh man, that's crazy. Um, it's interesting, everything that's happening in Charles' life all at once. Not only is Zoe back in, I mean, not Zoe, she's calling her by her real name. Lucy's back in his life because she, like, randomly showed up. But also, he was back on the Brazos set, except they're putting him in a wheelchair and they're giving him dementia. It was kind of a last-minute decision in case the studio is like, yeah, in case you kind of go away from prison, for prison, we kind of have to write you out. The fact is, a TV show has to think about stuff like that ahead of time. Like, I mean, it's not a typical basis that you find yourself in that type of situation it's not like a very like all oh, it happens all the time it's just it's still just kind of interesting to know the behind the scenes to that like they've written they've set him up this way like just in case we know that we're gonna have to pull you off the show because it's not even like oh you're gonna get canceled it's just because it's like oh no it's just like we won't be able to use you i mean i'm surprised they also didn't twist that into a whole like oh man brazos has fallen so far and end up using the fact that he's in prison but i don't know if you could actually legally do anything you know they they would probably still weave that into the storyline to some some extent. So I think that, that either way, um, I love the whole situation of Lucy being here, but he has no idea how to really communicate with her because she's not the same little girl he knew. Because uh, I didn't realize like so much time had passed because I thought like I guess well because him and uh, her mom were together for like what. A couple years, but didn't she say that also been like eight years since they maybe I can't remember if Lu, I, I I was under the impression it was like Lucy was like seven when they started dating and I thought they were together for six years or maybe it was a thing of Lucy was fairly young at a time. And so like you Lucy went from one to six and then eight years passed without them communicating. Um, it's what she kind of she said, like, oh, yeah, eight years is a long time. And I'm like, OK, because I thought it was like. Well, I figured it was like, because I know she was like, I, I guess in my head I was thinking she was seven when they stopped dating. I mean, when they started dating, she was seven, you know? Maybe I'm misconstruing that. Maybe I got it right back then in season one, and now over time it got misconstrued in my head, or maybe I had gotten it wrong the entire time. Either way. And I love that he's like, okay, Mabel, I need you to communicate with her. It's like, oh, because I'm a girl. It's like, no, because you're young. It's like, she's saying all this stuff that, like, I don't get i don't understand the reference i don't get it and then like mabel felt so out of touch too which i love that because it is a completely different language like you know it's like it's uh it's baby boomers and um uh millennials and zoomers and it's like yeah everyone's speaking a very different language because even millennials are like wait wh what huh because everything that was coming out of her mouth mabel was like what? Because, like, she was also talking super fast. I also love the fact that she's like, oh, yeah, I listen to podcasts on, like, two times speed. And I think that's funny because um, some people are like, wait, you listen to stuff on two times speed? That's kind of sociopathic. The, or at the very least, like, watching things at a at faster speed is kind of seen as, like, that's weird and that's crazy. But I guess, like, podcasts are a little different. I feel like I typically don't hear people talk about the fact is they listen to things on, like, higher speeds like that. But I guess it's like you're trying to... For her, it's like, wow, your voices are a lot deeper than I thought because she's so used to listening to everything in two times speed. But um, she had talked about everything with Mabel and, like, all this stuff. And you just, like, it was, like, social media stuff. And you're just it's like, oh, I, it's like, wait, what? Have you, like, oh, the mental health TikToks and stuff? You're just like, 
brain overload, Mabel's like, hey guys, I will pay you $200 to come back in here. Like, what's going on? Like, because she was kind of out of her element. She thought she'd be able to handle this no problem. Uh, but, um, Lucy had her reasons for coming to see Charles, and I actually thought they were really sweet reasons. Obviously, she didn't want to tell Charles the like, truth from the very beginning. More so just that, um, she just says that like her and her mom had gotten into a fight. They ended up finding out that um, she didn't go to the wedding that night, because the wedding was the same night that Charles ended up getting arrested. Um, but also, um, she's the one that ended up helping them navigate the building, because it turns out... Um, she knows the ins and outs of like the secret passages in the building because they used to play hide and seek here with like the across the uh, the neighbor that kind of lived across from uh, Charles, and so she knows how to navigate the entire thing. But obviously Charles doesn't want her in the middle of this, especially considering they found the murder weapon in Charles' room, uh, and it's like first the painting, now this. Everything's like that's also once again the interesting thing that like yeah the black they're blackmailing charles and mabel super hard i mean they kind of got mabel dead to rights to some extent but like they are leaning into the charles of it all which i'm wondering why and that and i'm sure that more and more that's well to be fair i was about to say it was in charles's apartment but apparently the knife belongs to oliver so i was because he was feeling left out of it and it's like well don't worry they used a knife out of your from your uh possession you know, and then also Howard admits that, uh, he finally admits, okay, I lied to you how I got this black eye. It was because of, um, it was because of, uh, Nina punched him in the eyes. Like, right, she's a lot meaner than people think. It's like, oh, they think, thanks for this information. You gave us a lot to chew on. He could have texted. He's like, yeah, I know you guys are hacked into T Tim Kono's phone. You're not going to hack into mine. You're not going to guess my password. Is it Evelyn? No, which I'm like, oh, God, come on, Howard. Don't be too transparent, like, because literally people listening to the podcast will be able to guess your password most likely, you know? Um, either way, I am curious what Oliver did ultimately end up doing with the weapon, because it's like, right, you can't get rid of it because Mabel's like, right, my fingerprints won't be on it, so it could prove that I didn't kill Bunny. But also, at the same time, now... Um, Lucy's fingerprints are on it, so what he's going to end up doing with it, I don't know. I also love that, oh, see you later, dog, when he was talking to Lucy, and then Mabel was just in the background, don't ever say that again. I'm like, oh, God, it's so, uh, I love it. But um, that moment between Lucy and uh, Charles was actually really beautiful, especially when you add it, well, because... Because, obviously, they're suspecting Nina, because, obviously, like, her and her boyfriend, like, him and Mabel ended up seeing her, um, her and her boyfriend do it, which are like, oh, and that makes you weird, because, for one, you're watching someone have sex, you're also watching someone pregnant have sex, so just layers upon layers of, like, okay, this is weird, we also should be watching this, um, but it seems like, yeah, Nina needed Bunny out of the way, but I think it is the thing of now she kind of regrets things playing out the way they did, because, regardless of it all, I think she did look up to... Um, Bunny and like, yeah, she wanted to change things, but she didn't want Bunny dead to make things happen. She wanted Bunny, she probably wanted to show off to Bunny, like, see, I'm bringing the Arconia into the 21st century. Look at how amazing things are. She wanted to show her, like, almost like a, 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 a shot. She wanted, like, Bunny to be proud of her, I, I think, to some extent. So, at least, you know, maybe that's why I'm reading into it, but they went into, like, you know, make, confront Nina, but. They ended up helping deliver her, well, not even helping deliver her baby. Charles was able to kind of like uh, talk her down. And it was this very beautiful speech. And you can tell it really touched both Mabel and uh, Lucy. But I also love that Oliver's like, yeah, it was like a, he gave a lifetime movie speech. That honestly made uh, got me moved a little bit. So I thought that was interesting. But especially Mabel saying that. She knows what it's like to kind of miss a father in your life because her dad died when she was really young. And um, she some, she says that Charles reminds her a little bit of her dad sometimes, she thinks. Um, and it is interesting because I feel like that's why he kind of like liked Mabel a lot because he probably thought like, oh, like you remind me so much of like who Lucy would be and who I'd want Lucy to end up kind of like. I think that was all. He never said it, but 
there there was always a very deeper like a very deep bond between Mabel and Charles in that regard. So I always thought that was sweet. And so ultimately Lucy ends up telling Charles the truth that she it's not that she doesn't she doesn't like the guy that her dad her mom is currently with. It's like not that he's a bad guy or anything. The only issue is he's not Charles. It's like, right, he's like, yeah, but he won't uh, get you most likely mixed up in a murder investigation. And she's like, of the five dads I had, you're obviously the best. And he's like, I'll take that. Because she really missed him. It's like eight years, you know, it's a long time to go without contact. But he was like, I thought I wasn't allowed, you know? She's like, well, you are allowed. And I'm like, oh, that's really sweet. Because she's like, yeah, like if I, um, she had said that if, things were differently, like, she'd still be living across from, like, 14C, she's like, Charles would be taking me, like, you know, to check out colleges, and try to make sure I don't have an eating disorder, and when I eventually, like, do change, like, my pronoun, he'd most likely get it wrong or something, it's kind of a sweet to think about, it's kind of, like, really heartbreaking to think about the life that could have been, you know, so I just thought that was kind of really interesting on that front, um, And obviously, Charles, you know, wishing uh, Lucy's mom all the best in her new relationship and everything. It's like, tell her I said hi. I wonder, will we ever see her pop up? Maybe, maybe not. But if it, like, it's also like, right, don't feel too bad about the Jan thing. She's like, listening to the episode, I actually thought she was a really nice match for you because Lucy didn't like the thought of, like, Charles being here all along. Like, she knew things were kind of rough, obviously, for them. It's kind of a rough patch for them after they left. But also, she was worried about him and being able to hear from him, knowing that he's okay. Also, but having been listening to the podcast and knowing about, like, that's her way to kind of have kept in contact with him to some extent. She was actually there the night they were arrested. Um, she wanted to hang. I think it's like, right, she had already gotten into that argument with her mom, and he didn't know she was in town, plus, like, everything that was going on. He, he would have said things differently if he knew she was literally, what, two feet behind him, but he didn't realize she was there. And she was in the walls. I was like, did the killer see her? I was like, no. And she also didn't see the killer. They were covered up. But we got a very distinct thing about the killer. Like, we heard them, like, sneeze. So whoever it is, may potentially have some, like, allergies or something. So... Um, it might also be a thing of, might just because it's like super dusty in there, but it could be indicative of them having allergies. Like, I don't know where like Bunny's room is in correlation to like Howard's. Cause I was wondering like, could you have gone by Howard's and like sneeze because of the cats or something like that? So could it be someone that's allergic to cats? Once again, most likely probably just like the, like they, they were just, it wasn't even like a, I mean, it sounded like it could have been a sneeze, but it was like, it was like a Sounded like they were, like, coughing slash sneezing something up. Like, there was, like, some mucus or something lodged in there. So, I don't know if that was, like, an allergic thing or just the dust in the air. Either way. So, I guess Lucy didn't want to tell Charles that. Because, well, for one, probably doesn't want to make him feel bad. Like, you were in the building at that time. Two, she didn't see anything. She kind of heard Bunny's murder, but she didn't see the killer. And if she told him the truth, it's just like, yeah, she'd be, like, you should. She's just saying, like, right, there are things going on in this building you have no idea about. He's like, that's. He's like, that's, you're the second person that in a, I put into a car who's kind of told me they know more than me, which obviously referencing um, Lenora last episode. So that yeah, was interesting. And I thought the unknown caller he was getting, I was like, is it his dad? I was like, I know he said his dad's dead, but I'm like, did he lie and his dad's actually still in prison or something? It's like, the moment he got there, I was like, oh, just from the camera view, I was like, and we saw the lone care. I was like, no, nope, it's, uh, no, nope, Jen, we're pulling a little, little bit of a Hannibal Lecter here. It's like, right, you need his help. And she's like, oh, Charles, I've missed you. And it's like, oh, that's going to be interesting. I, I didn't know if we were going to get any Jen at all. To be fair, we not only got Jen in this episode, which we're also going to get a lot more from the next episode, I'm sure. But we also got Teddy and Theo, which was actually really surprising, too. I love that, like, Charles would just get, I mean, uh, Oliver was just getting in the elevator and saw Teddy up. He's like, hey, Ted, Ted, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the next episode. He's like, no, come on, get in, Oliver. You're like, oh, man, this is an awkward. He's like, yeah, trying to, like, mindfulness uh, badges. And he was also talking about, like, right, because right now I want to wring your neck. But that wouldn't, that would, I'm losing me my three mindfulness badges. And so before he got out of the elevator, he's like, you know what, Charles? I'm go I just want you to know, I'm going to fuck you. And it's like, excuse me? I'm going to fuck you. I'm going to fuck you so hard like no one's ever fucked you before. You all, you know, and the fact of the matter is, I don't know when it's going to be, but you will not see it coming. And to basically give you a big bowl helping of fuck. I'm like, wow. Okay. And um, 
then there was a whole situation with him inside. Well, because all of, while they were in the walls, Oliver wanted to kind of get a peek in on um, get a peek in on uh, Teddy to like find out what he's got planned, and he called an argument between both. Like Theo and Teddy aren't on the same page. To be fair, Teddy's only in as deep in all of this as he is because of his father. And his dad's like, "I've all I've ever done was protect you. Let me take charge." But Theo, for the first time, is me. Like, no, I'm going to take charge. I'm getting my own separate lawyer, which I think any lawyer would tell you to probably do that because it's like, right, your father. You know, his best interest would come first. I mean, I think he would try to look out for Theo, but it is also like any law, any good lawyer would probably tell you like, no, you do need to get your own lawyer. You don't want to be represented by your father's lawyer because your father's lawyer, it's it's not necessarily a conflict of interest, but it kind of is a conflict of interest because their job is to, well, you're both going to be their client, but it's going to be a little contradictory because it's like, right, you're going to, because to probably save one client, you probably have to throw the other one under the bus. So it kind of enters that territory. And for Th uh, Theo, it's like, you're killing me. Like, I think for him, his life has always been so suffocated because of his father. Like, he didn't get to have, like, a normal life. Like, everything his father did, yeah, his father probably thought he was doing the right thing. But he's like, you kind of screwed me up. And seeing Teddy, despite, like, how villainous he is, I mean, you know, and despite how much he's threatening you... Oliver actually felt bad. He's like, it actually made me want to go hug my son. And he had kind of blown Will off because Will's like putting on a production um, at, at the school. And he doesn't, he needs help. But, you know, Oliver's so busy with the investigation. But he decides to show up in the end. It's like, and it's like, wait, you didn't put a chubby kid in the um, uh, cowardly lion? He's like, yeah, because the Tin Man is like, no, oh, nobody cares about the Tin Man. Which I find so interesting considering they did a reboot. I'm like, God, now it's like... 15 years ago? I want to say that was 15 years ago. Wasn't that like 2007? I think that's like one of the first things I... Yeah, one of the first things I ever saw was Zoe Deschanel in. Might have been one of the first things I ever actively ever saw maybe Alan Cumming and uh, Neil McDonough in. Uh, the Tin Men. It was like basically... But it, like they... I think they kind of made the Tin Men kind of like Zoe, um, the, uh, Dorothy and the Tin Men kind of like the central characters, whereas Dorothy always kind of had... That's so interesting for him to make that statement, but it's like, yeah, they kind of did a reboot of The Wizard of Oz um, that kind of had the Tin Men at the heart of it to some extent, so... They did do a reboot show called Emerald City that I really liked, sadly, was short-lived. Um, I'm trying to think which of the three was kind of at the center of that. I'm trying to remember. I think the Tin Men was kind of at the center of that two to some extent, but it's been a while, so I might not be remembering it correctly. Either way, I just thought that was kind of an interesting statement. And being there to help out Will, and it's just like bribing the kids with Skittles. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, but I didn't talk about it, uh, the whole Nina thing. We obviously know she's not a killer. Figured she wouldn't be, but um, like how... Like I said, like I brought up earlier, I, she was like adamant about like no, like uh, Bunny would have been so happy about seeing this kid. She was super excited. And once you find the person who did find the murderer, get me in the room with uh, just five minutes alone with that motherfucker. And I'm like, wow, you know. So they know, like, right? She's not the suspect, and just everything that kind of went down. It was kind of a wild episode for them. So I'm very, very excited to see uh, where the next episode takes us going forward with. All of this. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.